are you doing? I'm so happy that you're able to join us this Sunday evening for service. I couldn't resist the beautiful day. My goodness, the day is awesome. And I was like, man, I've got to preach outside. So excuse the wind noise, it'll be windy today. And the occasional cars that, you know, go by, please excuse the noise. How are you doing? We are starting a new series um, on faith and it's going to span, I don't know, maybe a couple of months because I want us to go back to faith because the Bible lets us know that man, Christians, we must live by faith. So faith is an important, important subject that every Christian must ensure that they have on their fingertips, that they have a strong grip of. So that's why we're going back to faith. And I thank my wife. She started our series on um, Wednesday, if you miss Wednesday, on Tuesday, sorry, if you miss Tuesday service, you missed a whole lot. She came from an angle that was amazing. So we're going to take it, we're going to continue today. But what I want to do today is, or maybe throughout this month, God willing, or a couple, in the next couple of um, sessions, is to take us to the rudimentary basics of what faith is. So, more or less what I will call the ABCs of faith. You know, what is faith? What faith is not? You know, the basic principles of faith. That is what I'm going to start with today. So today, we'll be looking at what, we'll be looking at what faith isn't. What faith is not. You know, we have some misconceptions of what faith is and that has affected our ability to receive from God. Because when we think we are walking in faith, the truth is that we are most likely not in faith. So I'm starting that series today. What faith isn't. Hallelujah. Sweet Spirit of the Most High God, I welcome you this evening. And I ask that your presence be strong. Holy Spirit, I ask for the teaching unction. Open our hearts. Let your word come simple, direct, precise to us this evening. Let faith, hallelujah, well up in each and every one of us. That at the end of today, we will no longer be confused at what faith is in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Number one, what faith isn't. Faith is not a feeling. That is the basic one. <laughs> because I've heard people say, oh, I feel faith. I feel now that I can, I can get those things I trust God for. So they base their faith, in quotes, on how they feel. So when they feel down, gloomy, and lonely, they think they don't have faith. They think they will not be able to receive from God. But that is not entirely true. Hallelujah. I've got a plane overhead. Hopefully, it will make so much noise. That is not entirely true. Hallelujah. Faith has absolutely nothing to do with how you feel. Faith has everything to do with what you know. I'll say that again. Faith has absolutely nothing to do with how you feel. Faith has everything to do with what you know. It's all about knowing. The Bible lets us know that faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing the word of the Lord. Faith does not come by feeling and feeling faith. No. It comes by hearing and hearing. So it's based on what you know. And I use that word know. Um, I don't say loosely. I use it purposefully because the word know is not just knowledge the word know when you go back to the scriptures is beyond knowledge have you ever read in your bible like i think in genesis chapter 4 the bible says an adam knew eve <laughs> and they had two sons 
Adam knew Eve. So that word knew, know there or knew is not knowledge. It's a deeper form of knowledge. It is deep intimacy. So Adam intimately knew Eve and they produced. That same way, when you intimately know the word of God, you will produce. <laughs> you didn't hear me. When you know the word of God intimately, you must produce. Do you know why? The word of God is seed. When you plant seed, you expect that seed to produce. The Bible calls it the incorruptible seed of God's word. You expect the seed to produce. Every word of God produces. That is why God said that the sent word will not come back to him void. What does void mean? Void means come back to him without producing the reason for which it was sent. So every word of God produces. Don't send the word of God and not expect it to produce. It must produce. So when you know God's word, it must produce. So the action on the knowledge of God's word that you have, which is faith, produces. So it doesn't mean, or it doesn't matter rather, how you are feeling. You might be tired, you might be, oh, but once you can remove doubt, fear and worry, stand on the word, regardless of how you feel. The word of God must, will, surely produce. The word of God must, will, and surely produce in your life. That is how powerful God's word is. That is what faith is. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, verse 1, Now faith is the tangibility of the things that we hoped for. So faith sees as real, sees as tangible the things we hope for. There's a tradition that says that faith is the assurance, is the confidence. You know, John said in 1 John that this is the confidence that we have in him. That is faith. It is not a feeling. It is assurance. It is confidence that whatever God's word has said must produce in my life. That is what faith is. So faith has absolutely nothing to do with how you feel. Glory be to God. The second thing I want to tell you that faith isn't, is that true faith is not deedless, or to put it this way, is not void of action. A lot of people say they are working in faith, but they don't have the corresponding action to show that they are in faith. So faith is not void of action. Faith precedes action. Faith precedes action. So if you're not acting on what you know, if you're not acting on those promises of God, you are not in faith. If you're not acting in line with the things you trust God for, you are not in faith. No matter how much you have been moved, <laughs> no matter how much you have been you know, zealous about it, if you're not acting like what you say or what you trust God for is true or must be true, almost come to pass in your life, you are not in faith. This is the very vital point. <laughs> and James, the brother of Jesus, talked about it in James chapter 2. And permit me today to read some scriptures. Usually on Sundays, I try not to read scriptures, but on Tuesday, we'll sit on scriptures. That's why you should never ever miss our Tuesday Bible suffer. Never, never, never miss it. You attend, you go back and catch up on the podcast. You go back to YouTube and listen to the things 
that we are thought. Hallelujah. James chapter 2. Now see what James said. He said, hey, brethren, if your brother comes to you, <laughs> he's hungry, he doesn't have clothes or a place to put up for the night, and you tell him, oh, go, brother, it's well with you. God will show up strongly for you on your, on your behalf. He says, hey, 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 that, don't do that. He said, <laughs> he said, don't do that. He said in verse 16, and one says to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled. <laughs> that is gold, you'll be warm, you'll get somewhere comfortable to stay, and you have food to eat. He said, don't do that. And he didn't give them anything. He said in verse 17, thus also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. <laughs> Faith that is void of action is dead. Is dead. Is in comatose. <laughs> if that makes any meaning to you. And this is a very, very important point that we must note about what faith is and what faith isn't faith without works is in comatose he now continued he said in verse 18 but if someone will say you have faith you have faith and i have works he said show me your faith without works faith cannot stand alone without works both of them must work together faith works hand in hand with works. He said, show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. In other words, how you know that someone has faith is by the action that they take. So you can't tell me you have faith. I won't listen to your lyrics. I won't listen to your words. I will look quietly at what you're doing. It is based on what you do that I will know if you have faith or if you don't. So I have faith without works. He said, fine, I will show you my faith by my works. That is why when those four friends took their paralytic friend and broke the roof because they couldn't get in through the door to where Jesus was, they broke the roof and lowered their friend down. Jesus said to them, <laughs> I see your faith but we know that faith is an intangible how come you can see it it is seen by your works it is seen by the, your corresponding action that's what we mean at times we, we use the word wo, the word works when we talk about faith and it confuses people i don't mean works of righteousness i mean your corresponding Corresponding action. What does that mean? The actions that corresponds with your confession. The actions that correspond with your belief. The actions that correspond with what you want to see. That is the works we are talking about. Paul was preaching. I was preaching. Sharing the word of the Lord. Remember, faith comes by hearing the word. All of a sudden, the Bible says, he saw a paralytic sitting in front of him and bible says that paul saw <laughs> that that paralytic had enough faith for healing he said to him thrice up and walk what did paul see paul saw that the man's heart has been filled with the word of the lord paul saw the assurance that the man has that he can walk Maybe Paul saw that he was trying to get up, taking corresponding action. And Paul now backed up his action by the pronouncement of, 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 of faith. And what happened? The man got up and the man walked. <laughs> faith without works is dead. Permit me to, to read some, some of these verses here in James chapter 2. And I said in verse 19, you believe that there is one God, you do well. 
See, the devils, demons, believe also that there is God. <laughs> Are you saying faith on its own doesn't move God? Even devils have faith in God. But they don't act in line with their faith in God. That is the difference. See, even devils <laughs> believe and even tremble, feeling. They won't feel it. <laughs> But are they acting on it? No. <laughs> but do you want to know, oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Hallelujah. Then he now talked about Abraham. You know, we've preached wrongly from that scripture where the Bible says that Abraham woke up early in the morning based on instruction of God to go sacrifice Isaac. We've said, and preached wrongly saying that that sacrifice is a sacrifice that will give you money when you give something that is painful then god responds to it and blesses you that is wrong doctrine that is wrong and i'm shouting from the mountaintop that is absolutely wrong that is not what that story is all about that story the bible made it clear that it is a test of faith he even talked about it in hebrews chapter 11. it was a test test the first verse of that place in Genesis, the Bible made it clear that God tested or wanted to test Abraham. Testing him for what? It is testing him for faith. So what does that mean? Your faith is tested based on the action you take. I'll say that again. Your faith is tested based on your action. Not based on how you feel. Not based on how you cried. Not based on how you shook. It is based on the action you take in line with what you believe. That is how we know you have faith. That is how faith is tested. So he talked about Abraham, and I like it. This is a beautiful case study. So our father justified, was, our, was not our father Abraham justified by works, corresponding action, not works of righteousness. It is corresponding actions. When he offered Isaac his son on the altar, he said, do you see that faith was working together with his works? Now, say by works, faith was made perfect. Are you seeing? It is your action in line with what you believe. You trust God for healing. When you feel that pain, do you succumb to the pain or do you stand upright? When you feel that pain, do you go uh, uh, and go and lie down on the bed? Or do you persist in that thing you are doing? Persisting through that pain. I am healed. I will finish this task. I won't lie down. I won't bend over. I will finish this task. It is that corresponding action that perfects your faith. And when your faith becomes perfect, your healing comes. <laughs> now we have a helicopter. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is your action. Glory be to God. That brings the healing. And you're wondering, this sickness is not going. It's because your faith is yet to be perfected by your works. That is why the sickness is persisting. <laughs> what did Abraham do? He woke up early, took his son, took wood, took fire, took everything, got a couple of servants, and they marched up Mount Moriah on the way. Isaac knew, knowing what it means to sacrifice to God, knew they were missing one element, which is the lamb for sacrifice. Asked his father, where is the lamb? <laughs> and the man answered, by faith, the Lord will provide. He didn't sit at home waiting for the provision. <laughs> Saying, ah, I know God, he's just testing me. I'll just wait here in faith at home. The lamb will come here to me at home. No. He obeyed the word of God, which is the instruction, took his son. It was at the point of no return. He took the dagger to pierce the heart of his son. And he was lowering it down. The angel of the Lord shouted, which is God, <laughs> don't do it. Now I know. <laughs> God said, now I know. Listen to me. Everything you tell God, I'll do this, I'll do that. He doesn't know anything till you act. <laughs> till you act. If you are not acting, God does not know. God knows, sees, believes you by your action. 
not by what you're saying. Because he knows the heart of man. <laughs> he only believes when he sees your action. When he sees your action. You see there in verse 24, that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. You can say, I believe in Jesus Christ if you've not confessed with your mouth. <laughs> That's why you believe, then you act on your belief by confession. The Bible now says, when these two works together, the Bible says that that man, that woman, is now saved. Is now saved. Faith does not work alone. The triplet of faith is faith, belief, trust, confidence, Patience, action. I've done um, a series on that. I call it um, the quadrant of miracle, the miracle quadrant. I'm telling you, I added hope that made it fall. You need to listen to it it's on the podcast, I believe. Listen to it it's an awesome series. Awesome series. Fantastic series. They all must work together and he gave some examples talked about Rahab that put action to her word that's how she became saved verse 26 for the body without the spirit is dead when a man dies what happens his spirit leaves the body he says so faith without works is absolutely dead <laughs> Faith without works is the dead. <laughs> Glory be to God. The third, the third, third, I'm going to give you what faith isn't. Is faith is not a positive mental attitude. <laughs> I think this is where I'll stop. I'll wrap this up and we'll continue on Tuesday. Faith is not a positive mental attitude. There's another one that confuses a lot of believers. They just can't understand why they waited and waited and waited and that miracle was not coming. I like the way Kenny Hagen calls it. He calls it mental accent. You know, another way I want to put it is wishes. Oh, I wish this would happen. I wish that would happen. Wishes or a wish is not faith <laughs> and even the world even puts it beautifully the secular word they say if wishes we are horses beggars will ride a wish will not deliver to you supernatural product which you call a miracle a wish will not bring that miracle only faith coupled with action will so faith is not a positive mental attitude you know Norman Vincent Peale, I've read this book then, decades ago, in his book called The Power of Positive Thinking, offers the following advice on how he thinks people should start their day. He says, first every morning before you arise, say loud, I believe three times. <laughs> and he said, <laughs> he doesn't say in what or in whom you should say you believe because in his view, it doesn't really matter. The important thing is to believe. See why I say faith without works is dead. That most multi, that uh, mental attitude, that confidence, that oh, I believe things will work out, things will work out on its own, is insufficient. There's a difference between positive thinking and faith. There's the difference between law of attraction and a law of miracles. There is a big difference. In faith, you are standing on something. In faith, you are believing in something. You are believing in the source who is God. You believe in his word which can never, 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 never return to him void. You believe <laughs> in his word. You hold it strong. That's what you are standing on. That is faith. Just believing in yourself is not faith. You must believe in God, the source. When you believe in yourself, it's like saying, I know I am able. I know 
I have the capacity. I trust myself. I believe in myself. Does that work? Yes, it works. It works based on your ability. It doesn't work based on your inability. Believing in yourself and believing in your ability is good. It is believing using your natural faith in the things you see. Faith is not your natural faith. We're going to come to, to that topic when I talk about the two kinds of faith. Faith is not your natural faith. Faith is God's faith that he has given you. It is a supernatural force on your inside that sees the impossible. When you believe in yourself, you're not seeing the impossible. You're seeing the possibility that your strength can deliver. So you believe in it. It's good. So it delivers based on facts, based on the things you've seen, you've done your calculations, and you know you can't do it, so you go out and you do it. Mm. The difference between that and the faith I'm talking about is that this has gotten to your wit's end. You cannot do this. You don't have the capacity to do this. So you switch over your belief from yourself to the supernatural being that is all powerful, that is vested in him, the might to bring that thing that you cannot do to pass. That is faith. It's no mental accent. It's not believing in yourself. It's not positive thinking. It's not positive confession. They are two different things. That's what Jesus said that with God, nothing shall be impossible. What is he talking about? When it comes to the impossible, what is the impossible? What man cannot do? You need to hook up with God. That is faith. So faith is believing in the Most High God, trusting and having confidence in His power to do the impossible, to do that thing I cannot do on my own. That is faith. So people are wondering, but I have faith and this is not working. Why is it not working? That thing you're trusting for is impossible to man. So you need to switch over to faith which makes what is impossible to man come true or become possible because you switched your confidence to the supernatural God. <laughs> the, the creator and source of all. When you switch your trust and your faith and your confidence and you put it on him, he who makes the impossible possible will now move into action to bring it to pass. That is why the faith we are talking about here is the supernatural faith. So you have to follow me throughout this series. I will talk about it. The two kinds of faith. The two kinds of faith. I put it this way. Biblical faith is not a positive mental attitude that seeks to bring into existence the things that I believed in. It is good to think positively, and that is true. It is right to desire to be around posit positive thinkers rather than negative people. Absolutely. You won't find me around those that think negatively, right? Yet, positive thinking and by itself is not biblical faith. Genuine faith has God as his subject, his word as its medium, and you as the object. <laughs> I'll say that again. Genuine faith, supernatural faith, the God kind of faith, has God as his subject, meaning he's the source, has his word as the medium. His power will be released through his word, his promises in the Bible. So that's why you should stand on it. Because as a medium, it will convey you to your miracle. It comes from the source and takes you, if you are standing on it, <laughs> like a flying saucer, to your miracle. So you put your faith in the subject who is God. You stand.
stand on the medium, which is the word, and you have confidence in it, then the miracle comes to you, the object, and you enjoy it. So, Pastor, you say, well, you don't think positively. No. When I talk about the two kinds of faith, you see there is a place for it. There is a place where you need your human faith. For example, if I want to get into a, a building and I need to open the door with my hand, I don't stand there and try to use my supernatural faith. Oh God, I trust you, you are the all-powerful. Do the impossible, open this door for me so that I might walk through. That's absurd. Why? It is within your ability, your capacity to stretch forth your hand, grab the handle, bend it, push it either inwards or outwards, then you walk through. It's in your, within your power. It's within your capacity. You have the ability. So you believe in yourself <laughs> to grab the handle, open it and walk through. That belief is using your natural human faith. So we need our natural human faith to interact with the natural world. Because we live in a natural world. So we need your natural human faith to interact with the natural world. Opening the door is a possibility to you. It is not an impossibility. So when it comes to things that are possible to you, you don't need to use supernatural faith. You go ahead and do it. I don't trust God to enter my car and drive it. I don't need to exercise or exert my supernatural faith to drive my car. It is within my ability and I can do it. So I believe in myself to drive my car. Within my ability, so I do it. But when it comes to things I know I cannot do, I don't have it in my ability to do, that's when I switch over to my supernatural faith. Now, uh, am I jumping <laughs> the steps I want to take in this series? But let me just say this. We should get to a point where we live every day using both in harmony. When we encounter things where our natural faith, our ability works, we switch over. When we encounter things where we need to switch over to our supernatural faith, we switch over. So it should work in tandem. We should use it in harmony. What you have to us Christians that we shut one down and we just live like a normal man. The Bible says, I see, we are kings. But yet, a lot of us who are kings and gods, we die like men, men. Why? We've shut down the supernatural part of us. And we're just existing, using the natural part of us alone. Oh, well, we're going to get that. That's why I don't drop the gun. So it's something you must use every day. The just shall live by faith. Both the natural faith every day and the supernatural faith every day. If you walk in harmony. In harmony. Don't shut down one and live with only one. You must have the two of them at the same time. Glory be to God. I feel like I'm rhyming now. <laughs> okay, I need to end. It's not in long teaching or preaching. We just take it little by little as we trust the Holy Spirit to let His Word permeate our hearts. Father, I thank you. I know your Word has come. Simple. It's going to uplift us. It's going to change us. Going to bring us to a place where miracles become our natural terrain, our natural atmosphere. And I thank you for it. I thank you for this series. I'm so excited about it. Giants of faith who arise at the end of doing this teaching. Doubt, fear will be dispelled away from us in the mighty name of Jesus. If you want to give something to God, please do it now. You want to pay your tithe? This is the time to do that, Father. I reign the blessings of the giver on this one. They will never lack. You will supply. You will supply all their needs according to your riches, not according to the UK economy, not according to the American economy or the Nigerian economy, but according to your riches in glory through Christ Jesus. 
all men and all. We are having our first convention summit that God spoke to me about four years ago to start. And I've been waiting for us to do it, you know, in-house, if you know what I mean. But we're going to do it online first. You know, the Holy Spirit talked to me recently about it, not to delay or dilly-dally. So we're having the first God Summit, starting on the 13th of July to the 16th of July next month. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have some guest ministers that are coming from God. So we're going to bring you fresh word from God. Now, what is God's summit? God's summit is an instruction God gave me to hold every year in some a couple of days or maybe in the future it might be up to a week where we just come and talk about Him. It is all about God. We focus on God, we talk about Him and He will show Himself strong in our midst. So it's going to be a meeting full of power. You need healing, make sure you're in those meetings. You need a breakthrough, Make sure you're in those meetings. You need if you marry or a relationship, you need a child. Make sure you are in those meetings. The power of God will be heavy, strong in those meetings. See, there are no distance. There is no distance in the realm of the spirit. So God will show up the spirit to tabernacle with us. All those days I'm looking forward to it. So save those dates. Save those dates. It's going to be awesome. Glory be to God. But we're going to see you two days time on Tuesday. We're going to continue from where I stopped. I'm not done with what faith isn't. I still have, a, I still have some more on my list. What faith, what faith isn't. So we're going to look at that on Tuesday. Same time on Tuesday and same platform. No, on Zoom. We are not online. On Tuesday, only on Zoom. So if you want to join us, join us for those series. Connect with us. The address on the screen. Send us a chat, send us an email, and we'll send you privately the Zoom link so you can join us. It's going to be awesome. Hallelujah. Go succeed, go prosper, for God is with you. This month will bring to you good tidings. In this month, you're going to hear that good news that you've been waiting for. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I love you. Bye-bye.